Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn. Want to learn how to make a bead? Stay tuned. Hi. You know, for centuries, literally centuries, people have been making beads using beading planes. Here's a beading plane. And I'll show you what it does. It has a fence and it has a bead of a particular size. And all that needs to be done is you hold the fence against the wood and you plane. Since the plane has a depth stop, when it stops cutting, the bead will be finished. There you see, it almost doesn't make any more shavings. That's it. How easy was that? Now, these beading planes come in a whole range of sizes. If you look up here, you can see all of these are beading planes. And you'll notice that not only are they different sizes, but some of them are multiple beads. Here's an example of a plane that makes multiple beads. And the technical term for multiple beads is actually reading. So I'll show you how that works. Put the wood in the vise. Put the plane on the wood. And do exactly the same thing. One more pass, or maybe two more passes. And that's it. That's how easy it is to make reeds. Now, despite all these different planes that allowed you to make different size beads and put them in different places, at the end of the 19th century, Stanley, the great inventor of metal woodworking tools, came out with something that they called a beader. And this is the Stanley number 66. And you can actually see the patent date on there it was invented in 1869 or 1898. What this does is something a little easier than the plane. It comes with a whole series of different blades. I'll show you the blades here. And if you look carefully, you can see each one of these cuts a slightly different shape. Not only that, they're usually provided with a couple of blanks. So with blanks, you have the ability to cut your own profile in the event that you wanted to match some antique that you're restoring. The way that the tool actually works is that it has a fence and it actually has two fences. There's also a curved fence for going around, but I'm just going to show you what happens with the one fence. You put the wood in the vise. And very gently, making sure that the fence is against the work. You come back, and as you can see, what's happening here, bit by bit, the tool makes, a, in this case, a pair of reeds. Now, despite the fact that you might not have a lot of beading planes, although they're still pretty easy to find. And despite the fact that you might not have an antique Stanley beading tool, and even though there, was, there are current manufacturers who make them for several hundred dollars, there's something else you can do that's even easier and even cheaper. And that's known as a scratch stock. Now, a scratch stock is just 
any piece of scrap wood that you find in this piece was a piece of oak and I cut it into a little L shape and then you take a piece of metal you can even take one of these blades if you have it or you can cut up a piece of your your, your child's lunchbox or a piece of broken bandsaw and you can make a profile and you can do the same thing that we did here by dragging it across the wood but this actually has another advantage in that it can make curved beads let me show you a couple of examples of that here's a piece of round wood right and the way this was done is you put the scratch stock against the wood and you simply drag this back and as you can see that's how it makes a nice round curve and the advantage of this over this apart from the fact that it's less expensive is that I've rounded the bottom of this so it makes it really easy to follow around it will also work on the other plane here's an example of something that's inside here we have a concave piece of wood making sure I'm going with the grain I do this and the scratch stock will form a nice little bead here I want to make sure that I always go with the grain here otherwise it'll tear out so I do this and eventually I'll have a nice bead here you can also make a corner bead the first bead I showed you was technically called just an edge bead but if you also bead the other adjacent surface you get a corner bead and with the scratch stock, something that is difficult to do or impossible to do with the plane and difficult to do with the expensive tool, I can plane a corner bead on a round surface. If you look closely, I can hold it this way so I can come all the way around because I've rounded this part. And now I can turn it on the other side and I can plane this. For my money, much as I love the beading planes, I really like the scratch stock because it can do curves as well as straight things. Plus the fact that if I loosen the screws that hold the two pieces together, I can move the blade anywhere I want so that instead of making a bead that's right up against the corner of the, of the, of the workpiece, I can make the bead in the middle. And of course, if I used a blade that had multiple teeth to it, then I could do reading. I think that's a pretty easy and simple thing to do. That's one of the advantages of doing woodworking by hand. So if you like that and you want to learn more, don't forget to press the subscribe button and then the like button. See you soon.